folks, Christy here with Just Saying with Cards, and I would like to demonstrate a few techniques on tonight's card. Uh, I've got one here that I finished, and a bunch of product that is ready to go to be assembled. What I'm going to start off with, because it takes the longest for drying time, is the um, technique back here. This has been drying for over 24 hours, so what I'm going to do tonight is show the technique but then use a different one that is cured or completely dry. So I have used the colors of Crush Curry, Real Red, Gorgeous Grape, and on standby I have Pacific Point as well. This technique here is done on watercolor paper with the Stampin' Up! reinkers. I've got coordinating cardstock punch damage, a couple of die cuts to give the impression of trees in front of mountains as the sun is setting or rising depending on where you're at. So let's get into this one. I have here a piece of cardstock that I don't actually need just yet. What I need to do, so this cardstock, let's just get to the measurements, this cardstock is two and a quarter by four and a quarter. It is going to be mounted on a piece of basic black that is two and a half by four and a half. And then under it will be the other layers. We'll get into that in a bit. First, I need to get the reinker ink down on this block. It is a Stampin' Up! F block, one of the massive ones. It's, it's a good size. Um, I use it predominantly for backgrounds or in this case just a solid acrylic surface for putting ink on and then using water. So the way I started this, I actually have to turn this slightly sideways for some reason, was using the reinkers, and I just kind of drew a line. This will give me more than just this one card as well. I can sometimes get, I want to say three Four could be pushing it um, before the colors meld too much and get brown and then you kind of just got to start over. I'm not going to use as much purple or gorgeous grape and just a little bit of Pacific Point. Okay, and then using a spray bottle of water I'm just going to give it some spritzes. Get the ink moving. Yep. Let's have the straw where the water is. There we go. Okay. Now I'm blocking. You can see that I'm blocking this because the spray of ink is even going off to the side and I'm protecting any of the other surfaces that I've got going on. So those mix well on their own. If they didn't, or if I wanted to smoosh them around a little bit, which I might here for the, the blue, I just use my aqua painter and blend those colors. Okay, so going back to this one. This is watercolor paper, so it's gonna handle the amount of liquid that it's getting. I'm first gonna give it a couple of spritzes of the water off camera, and then I'm gonna put the, that face down on here. So here we go. Four good squirts. It's got some water on it. And down. And then just holding it here, letting the ink absorb into the cardstock. That's most likely good. What I noticed when removing the cardstock is to go from the light, lifting up towards the dark so that the dark is then at the bottom and the colors don't go into each other. Okay, let's see what this looks like. One, two. Just gonna get those drips off the edge. And I think I talked a little too long, so here we go. I think that could still work. I'm not sure that I want to use this again. So, paper towel on the side, and I'm just gonna take off what I don't want. And I can add in 
maybe some more red. Touch of gorgeous grape. And maybe just a dot of Pacific white this time. Okay. Again, I'm going to spray this area. Get those colors going. And again, I'm going to go down from here where it's orange up to the red into the purple and blue. Okay. Same watercolor cardstock. Spritz, get that wet ready for this ink. And down and hold. Just letting that color absorb into the cardstock again. And again, lifting from the yellow up and out. And just here to the side. I'm kind of liking this one. Let's see how that dries. These are very vibrant right now. They do dry with a more muted tone. And so that I don't end up with too much brown. I just tipped off that bit that was right here. I'm going to clean this. I could use this a few more times maybe. Show you here. So because I like what's here, I can move this. So I kind of put it down on the yellow and then moved it to the right to get some more color. And then uh, it's fun. Each one of these is a completely different outcome. Um, you can see just from the three that I've done. So I'm just going to leave these here. This is just a um, clear dollar store placemat thing. There's two in a pack. I like them for just being able to have a contained area. Underneath all of this is my standard silicone mat that I used to craft on. So I'm going to move the block out of the way. I'm just wiping it paper towel and it's all coming off. That'll dry. So let's move this all kit and caboodle out of the way. That'll dry overnight. Up next is the rest of this card. Kind of an assembly process. Where did I put the original card? Good question, Christy. Anyways, moving on to the next. Okay, here's my silicone mat. Um, this is also a silicone mat, but this one is for when I'm actually using Tombow Multipurpose Adhesive. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to start first with these trees. And it seems weird that I'm going to start with a finishing item. But, last weekend, Sarah Douglas, the CEO of Stampin' Up! joined our Vancouver Island demonstrator group and she made a comment that she will let her liquid glue dry a little bit avoiding any overage um, where the, the glue can seep out from the other sides. So because I used the silicone mat I gave a little test just to see if the glue is coming out. It is before it explodes all over the place. I just test it off to the side and then just little little dots here and there. This glue does dry clear but with some of a shine so as it's drying while I'm making the rest of the card I can see that it's getting dry. It still retains its tackiness though. So that's there. Again I'm going to set this to the side and work on the rest. Up next, I have picked this watercolor concoction. This has got some of that Pacific Point, some gorgeous grape, real red, and crushed curry happening in it. Underneath, that's where those two trees came from. And again, the measurements for these are two and a quarter by four and a quarter, with the black layer being five, and, sorry, two and a half by four and a half somewhat unconventional for the measurement matting, um, but it 
works for this scale. I'm just going to use some tear and tape. Put these two together. The watercolor paper, even though it's dry, it still has a bit of a, a curve to it. So I'm adhering all four sides just to give some good coverage for the adhesive. Take these off. But the basic black layer is going to be with dimensionals to give it a bit of a pop. I want about a quarter of an inch on either side, and until I actually press it down, I can wiggle it around a little bit. There we go. And give it a bit of a curl. Okay. So for these, for this one, I think I can use. Here's my strips. These strips are four and a quarter by about one inch, and they're ready for me to put in place. So I'm thinking. This is how I did the first one. I can look at the colors and I think, what does this actually like? Do I want to go with that one? Do I want to add in the fourth one? I can. And then have the representation of all four colors of the re-anchor on this card. I think I'm just going to go with the three colors, the same as the one that I showed at the beginning. So let's take these and put some adhesive. You can use snail Tombow multi-purpose glue. I like tear and tape. It works well for my um, fingers and the ability to move properly. It can be hard for people who have nails, gel nails, and they can't get the the oops, they can't get the backing off. If that's the case, you could try to use your take your pick tool or a pointy tool, something with a, a, an edge on it, and lift up just the corner and then take it off. That's an option. So when I cut these strips from a sheet of cardstock, because they're four and a quarter, I cut the eight and a half in half and that made the four and a quarter which is about the width of the card but because it's hard to get the right here at the edge there's going to be a little bit of overlap and I'm okay with that. I'm going to show you how to fix it at the end of doing these three and actually using scissors on this card which is unusual. Okay again just butting up the red, real red to the crush curry and same here with gorgeous grape taking off the edges. Need his backing and up to the edge. Don't fit up to the top. So it's really just the crushed curry. But here I am. Flip the card over, you get a really good clear image, and then you can just trim off using the scissors. I like longer versus shorter in doing this. You could also put it against your paper trimmer and trim it that way. Just be careful not to cut the actual cardstock. Okay. So, oh, I have a little mountain. This mountain was cut from scraps. Just anything left over in the file that I have for my basic black. And I'm going to put this full on. It's going to overhang, that's okay. And I'm really not picky. Each one of these cards is going to look slightly different because all of the watercolors are different. Um, where I place the trees, the mountains, all of that's going to be a bit different. But again, just turning it over, then you can get that clear edge, that clear sight. Here is the fun and tricky bit. Okay. Tweezers. These are the inverted tweezers. So if I push, they open, and if I let go, they close. I am going to pick up my trees off the silicone mat. And turn it over. There is still some white, you can see that. That'll either dry a bit shiny, which I'm okay with, or I will rub it off once it's dry. And I'm just going to put this down. The second tree I'm going to lower a little bit. 
so it gives a bit of natural looking trees, I guess. Push that down. And then I don't want the overhang. So I'm going to take the scissors again. Yes, there's glue underneath. And I'm just going to try and line up the bottom of the color bit somewhere in where the basic black is and just trim off that tree. So it just ends right here at the edge. Okay. Stampin' Up! has black dimensionals. Absolutely awesome. So I'm going to put one in each corner and one in the middle. And then when somebody's looking at this card, they're not going to see a white underneath bit. It helps blend and, and give the illusion of floating, which I love. And this is almost done. Okay. Looks good. Again, um, I don't think I said it before. I'm trying to match the kind of the colors with the colors that are underneath. Push that down. Look at that. That's ink. Now, using some scraps, I can um, stamp a sentiment on these. I am going to use, again, a piece of scrap. This is basic black. And a one and a quarter punch, circle punch. That just goes to the side for a second. And then I'm also going to use a piece of white. I'm looking at this though, sometimes thinking I might change um, this circle layer to be a different color. Not sure how I feel. I have 18 more of these cards to make, so things evolve and maybe that'll change. I love doing circles. I've mentioned this in a previous video and sentiments because you never have to actually stamp them straight. The ink pad. I would love it if somebody could leave me a comment if they know what this indicates to me. Leave a comment below. If you've watched previous videos, I'll have covered that. Just inking up this thank you stamp. It's actually quite small and it's from Honey Bee. Um, this one here. It's a small enough sentiment that it can fit in this one inch circle punch, which is awesome. Okay. Um, adhesive on the back. This is going on the basic black. Bring the card back in. I'm just going to do my best to give about a quarter, eighth of an inch, one, one and a quarter. So an eighth of an inch um, around. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's handmade. Flip it over two dimensionals. And I'm going to actually put these dimensionals on this side because then I can overlap the focal image with the sentiment that's already up on dimensionals and just this side needs the, the dimensionals under the sentiment. So I hope you like this card. I enjoyed showing you a few techniques. Please like the video. That will encourage me to know that I'm making an impact and that you liked it. Leave a comment below. Remember for why I have this reinforcement, and if you would, if you don't already, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Just Saying With Cards. And I'm just saying, thank you for watching.